Hello again and welcome to Bands Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are almost out of September. Yes. Isn't that crazy? It is. So first of all, for all our fans out there, we'd like to apologize ah, for not being here so last week. Crazy. <laughs> so I get up in the morning, I go spend Tuesdays at the polls, you know, on and off. But I don't know where the morning went. Like all of a sudden it was it was so weird because either you text me or somebody text me and I was like, oh damn, I've got to go do a TV show. And then I looked down at my phone and I'm like, how is it 20 of 11? Yeah. And literally after I text you, oh, it was Matt Mayberry that said that. And after I text you, in walks Brendan, who's our producer guy. He comes wandering and he's doing camera and he looks at me and he goes, are you supposed to be taping it? And it was just like, <laughs> whatever. I don't know why we, why we just even... Yeah. Ever think we're going to tape on election day? I I would like to say I was on time. I was here. Our guest much. was here. I actually thought, Miss Tammy was just so missing. So actually, and then afterwards, uh, I kind of figured that you and Matt would just keep going. Yeah. And then I realized All later. right, folks back home, what do you think would have happened if Carla was just like, oh, I'm going to assume Tammy is just going to be like, fine. ah, do the show on your own because. I did not think that that was an uh, option, I, I, but it, now I know. It doesn't matter. And, and, and it was fine. It was whatever. So we are back. My nails match my shirt. I'm very excited about did that. Did you just get a pet? Do you do them yourself or do you pay some? I actually went uh, yeah, it's fun. for this because, um, I, you know, I bet my nails for like I know. 45 years and stopped maybe in the last three years or so. And so I like to do it. Yeah. And that was a little bit of a like a, a, a COVID thing where because you couldn't go, yeah. Yeah. I found, you know, I mean, I was trying to take care of them at right, home. Right, but then but, it, it, you know. It's not the same. No. And and so um, so they're very short. So I That's picked okay, sort of though. a nudie color, but yeah, so. Um, uh, so while we were not taping, people were voting in Manchester. That um, is true. We could just talk a little about um, Tuesday, last Tuesday's primary results. Um, we had a three-way race in the primary for mayor, Joyce Craig, the incumbent, Victoria Sullivan, and Rich Gerard. Um, Joyce Craig and Victoria Sullivan move on to the general election. Um, there are some, um, before I go into some interesting little oddities, um, on the alderman at large race, it, the top vote getter was Joe, Joe Vassar. Kelly, yep. Um, followed by Dan Goonan, which is surprising that he, it went Joe Lavasser, Dan Goonan, June Triskiani, and then Dan O'Neill. Dan O'Neill's at the bottom of that pack, oh, which is wow. kind of interesting. And if my gut, if I had a better beer today, I think Dan O'Neill doesn't survive the general. So, I couldn't so, tell you which of the two are which two are going to win out of the other ones, but I don't think Dan O'Neill survives. So, so remind me, is he the one who uh, is was a consultant for some uh, yes. union yes. who votes yes. all kinds of conflicts of yes. interest all the time and yes. then pretends like that's not yes. what's going that's on. So kind yeah. of like a bit of a yeah. shady character. So then on the school, <laughs> and, and, and what's interesting... That, for the simple reason that if you have a conflict of interest, just a, you should recuse yeah. yourself. That is what, you know, it's decent okay. people do. Right. Um, just be transparent about what you do. It's not a big, big ask. Um, in that race, um, 3,355 people left that didn't vote for anybody. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, in the school committee at large race, um, Jim O'Connell got the top votes, followed by Peter Argaropoulos. I have no idea who Peter Argaropoulos is. Um, apparently the Democrats, what, so what was this is school committee at large, followed oh, wow. by Will Infantine and then Joe Lachance, um, with 6,274 people leaving the ballot blank. So it goes to show that nobody really knew. I'm going to guess that most people didn't really know who those people were or who to vote for. But it is, Mark Hayward called me earlier or late last week, and he was like, so what do you think about the fact that the top vote getter in the alderman race is Joe Kelly, who's obviously very much on the right side of the spectrum. And then in the school committee at large race, the top vote getter is Jim O'Connell, who's like a socialist. So like, isn't it kind of weird? And I said, well, it seems weird on the surface. I'll give you that. Um, but when you're voting for two, it's really hard to know because were they, did they both ask people to bullet vote them? Did they, 
You just don't really know. It's a strange, it's hard to, it's hard to really digest a lot when there's multiple, vote for multiples in a primary. Well, it's, it's interesting for several reasons. First of all, because city elections are um, nonpartisan. And the only thing nonpartisan is that they don't put an R or a D or a U after your name on the ballot. Trust me, there is nothing nonpartisan about city elections well, 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 <laughs> in the back. Well, well, on the back end, but what I'm saying for the average person who goes into hmm. the voting booth, they don't, if there isn't an R or a D, they, they probably haven't done their research, right, right. so they really don't have a sense. Right. So then, with someone like Joe Kelly, Lavasser, he's right. well known. Right. You know, Joe's one of those people where I think people go, right. do I love him or hate him? I can't remember. But they know he's a Republican, you know, but they and know, people know that Jim O'Connell, that's a good point, and people know that Jim O'Connell's a Democrat, but do people really know who the other people, because I mean, people... You know, we say people didn't do the research, but I can almost guarantee that if you look up these races, you're probably not going to, you're not going to find anything that re really screams out at you like, hey, these people are Republicans or hey, these people right. are Democrats or undeclareds or whatever. Um, go ahead. Oh, so um, so I think it's just sort of indicative of that. So what, mm. some of what we're seeing is just yeah. purely name right. recognition it, you, where people I, are like, oh, that guy, or right. oh. You can't overread you know, right. into, especially. Because I think someone like Dan Goonan, who of course is the fire chief, right? And he was the guy who did the um, safe, safe. Safe, safe stations, yep. right? Um, his signs were all over yep. the north end. You know, uh, I was surprised right, that where was, I was driving that's where in some lived, areas. So that didn't surprise me but then in the other parts of the city I didn't see her landing true it's weird yeah it is so, and, um, and it's hard to know I mean it's hard to know I mean ward one that that is interesting that you're saying that um is there a deference ward one went to Triskiani Goonan O'Neill yeah and then blanks so I'm just gonna say anybody who thinks that Republicans stand a chance ever in ward one it's probably no. You know, and can we talk about that, the blanks a little bit? You know, certainly in, in my own Senate races over the years, I've I've sort of seen that, right? So I run Republican District 20, so mm. that's half the city in Goffstown. And in 2016, I got like, I don't know, 30 nine percent mm -hmm. of the vote or something and that was purely because i had an r next yep. to my name yep. and since then i've been fighting every two percent that yep. i yep. get right you know 2022 is my year folks um but if people don't know whether it's a r or d they, a lot of people just leave it yep. blank it's right? just like the questions if they don't really understand the question they just don't cast an answer right They're like i didn't even know what that meant so so in 2016 the delta between people who voted for uh chris sununu mm -hmm. so republican on the ticket and me was something like uh you know so people who had filled out chris yeah who didn't fill out yeah. me i think was like 40 yeah. percent, right so it was like wait a second <laughs> like you gotta close those gaps yeah. right because you want the same people who are voting for one the Republican top of the to ticket vote, right. to vo vote right. down the ticket. I mean, assuming it's not, you know, like that Marsh guy. Was it Marsh who changed from Republican to Democrat Recently, the other day? Yeah. And yeah. I think I have the right name. Yeah, and everyone Roy was like, oh, this is like so and big really deal. And I was like, he votes like a Democrat. Did What's you look at his voting record? All he's done is just said who he really is. He stopped right. pretending, you know, and I'm, I'm all for that. Like, right. you know, if you're not voting Republican, don't call yourself a Republican. Right. If you're not voting Democrat, don't call yourself a Democrat. Democrat. Run and be a part of the party that you align with. Or be a libertarian Republican like me. Small. Small, small L. L. Small yes. L. <laughs> um, so, so all I'm saying is, you know, localism is really what matters. Like, mm. whether it's Trump or Biden or Kamala right. or... You know, That's, Hillary or whoever right. in D.C., other than the fact that, like, they're all lo control freak lunatics who basically want to run every aspect of your life and think they own your pie hole. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? You should care about this who's is the stuff you really should care you about because here. these are the people who are going to make decisions that direct your life. Because, hello, second. we also no. are re bells. Yeah. And, you so, know, if you're going to call me non essential and then tax me more. So that ties into the next part. So going back to the mayor's race, um, Joyce got 52% of the vote compared to 48% that voted for somebody else. 
somebody might be like, well, that's a, that's actually a pretty close margin. That, that almost is within I, margin of error. That actually surprised me. I thought it was closer than, you know, what the braggards were so, saying on Twitter. Um, well, yeah, because she's going to claim, oh, look at this victory, because she'll compare her numbers versus one of the other candidates as opposed to combining, right? Because right? yeah. there's ways you always twist it to make it yeah. look good. I but just as a comparison, a um, in 2005, which was a long time ago, but it's the, it's a comparable thing. In 2005, uh, Mayor Baines was the mayor, and he was challenged by Frank Ginta. Um, very similar um, environment in the city. Crime was up, taxes up, were up, schools were underperforming. So very similar atmosphere. Um, in the primary in 2005, Baines got 54%. So he got more in their primary than Joyce got last week. And Ginta went on to close win. the gap and yeah. win with 51% of the vote. So from, from the inside politics perspective of people who crunch the numbers and try to com find you know, comparisons, I think, and I'm not saying this because I support Victoria Sullivan because yes, I do support is, Victoria okay. Sullivan, <laughs> but I I'm, I'm also can objectively say Right. That. I mean, we're just looking at the numbers. Joyce Craig is in trouble. I think so. I think Joyce Craig is in trouble. I think um, I think there's a lot. I do think crime is up, taxes are up, and school performances are down. And I, I, I mean, I just saw a thing on Facebook today that Joyce Craig was saying how crime is down. Oh, it, and I was like, crime is down? You tell anybody who lives in the city if they feel like crime is down. I think what might be down is people calling and reporting crime because... I've had people break into my shed at my other house. I've had people do damn it. Do you actually call the, you don't call the police anymore. What's the point? Well, I mean, I remember when we started doing this show together, let's say two years ago or so, I don't even uh -oh. remember, but it's been a while. Um, you know, you you would call the police if but there they, was something. And then the, you they, had this whole thing where you're like, well, I'm so frustrated because no, no one's one actually does anything. following so up. No, I, you know, so you so just unless it's up. major crime, although which we seem to have plenty of. I mean, a guy got shot in a bar the other night. They found, I mean, I read, the, read an article, I think it was in the last 10 days, you know, that, well, you know, we found another body. And I'm like, what do you mean we're just finding dead people? And they, people go, oh, well, they're just homeless people. And I'm like, okay. It's still odd that people are showing up dead in random places of our city. That's not a normal thing. That should never be the new normal to find dead people, regardless of who they are. Um, so I, mean, I do think Joyce Craig is um, is definitely very vulnerable. Um, for those of you watching who say, oh, I can't let Joyce Craig be mayor again. I got to do something to help. You know, I voted for Victoria or I voted for Rich Gerard or whatever. Um, you need to do more than vote. You really do need to step it up. You can go to Victoria's website, victoriasullivanformayor.com. There's a volunteer page. Click on that. Um, we're, she needs help with people going to doors. She needs help um, with people Signs, making phone donating, calls. Signs, donating, all, all the sorts good stuff. of things. There's, there's plenty of opportunities for people to help. Um, Joyce Craig has a financial war chest. That's just what happens. She's got like $300,000 to spend. Victoria is not going to have that and, kind and of money. And the majority of that money, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, it's not I from New Hampshire. Is, is out of state yeah. money. So yeah. that's just basically the big blue machine. Yeah. Can I just say Which, something? Which, by the way, the big blue machine didn't do so hot last Tuesday in this race. Right. And they and let's lost. Talk about the charter. I was going to say, they yeah. lost. Um, they lost the special election Ward 8. Like, they didn't even come close. Ed Sapienza sweep, swept that race. So uh, Manchester has been doing quite well with special elections municipally. We, Sebastian won his yeah. special election last year. Ed Sapien won the Ward 8 special election this year. Um, the charter question, I, I have my own theory. So the charter question that you voted on last week really wasn't the one that most people I don't think think it is. Every 10 years, we put the question forward, shall we establish a charter commission to review the charter? That's what this question was. But because people are so adamant that they don't want the charter question regarding the taxation ability yep. of the schools, I think they just said, no, I'm not touching the charter. I don't want you doing so anything I, with I, the charter. I think that was very interesting because two things happened, right? Like, I feel like I'm fairly in the know on local <laughs> politics at this stage. That morning, I read an article in the newspaper and they had said, oh, this, this um, judge has now come out and said, oh, no. It's okay. Uh, the, it's okay. You can separate the charter from the city, uh, you know, because there was all this like shenanigans and they've basically just messed 
and mucked this up from the start, right? Yep. So it's just been a mess from the start. But in typical government uh, logic, instead of going, oops, we screwed up, we should fix this problem, why don't we fix it and then do it right going forward? Because of course they can never ever admit they did anything wrong. That is the giant problem that we have. Um, Everyone was just confused, including me. I right. read the paper and I was like, oh, so what? Okay. So then you get to the, the, the polls, you get your ballot, you go in, and there was this long thing. And I was just like, no. I, I didn't when, know. I'm like, you know what? I know what the question is and I'm still going to vote no, just out of spite. And, and so the fact that it was such a resounding yeah. no actually made me smile because I was like, oh, that's a tell that's for right. November. And that what, means people are not okay with the, con the concept idea of, of changing of the charter. having the, the taxing know, authority move away from the city where we have a tax cap to give the school board of Manchester, which is failing at terribly. everything, uh, the ability to then take the 50% of the city budget that is currently subject to the tax cap they want to move that out from under the tax cap and then go well now well we're gonna spend some more money the um and yeah. and just for the folks back home more money does not solve the no. problems there has been more money more money more money we're With spending less in manchester and less students and less students. about sixteen thousand dollars per manchester student i mean the average national average for a private school is only fourteen thousand dollars so we're spending more than you would on average at a private school for results that are shocking yep um, so I think I, I actually, when I said, what was the number on the charter? I don't charter know. It's not end? here, but it was, it was, it was a bigger gap than say the mayor's race. Right. And so I thought that hard no, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, this know, is a good tell. I think we're to looking at November. Always be suspicious when people try to do things a certain way. Manchester, we, every 10 years, we were, we generally, up, this is the first time that particular charter question, I believe, has ever failed. Oh wow! Because it's not a it's not a controversial thing. It's just should we have a charter committee? You know, like right. we just it's just a technicality mostly. But well, it's a technicality except when they just change the rules well, and do shady things and then go had had the Democrats who obviously would like the schools to be able to send you a property tax bill had they just looked at this calendar and said. Well, you know, in 2021, we're gonna we're gonna vote to put a charter commission together, anyways. So in 2022, we should try to change this, right? They, they very they could have just taken that strategy, and instead they put mucked up a, an RSA and made that complicated. They mucked up the whole process for the city clerk's office and made that complicated. Now they've mucked up the actual who can send the question to the ballot part. It's mucked up. It is a mess. They could have just done this cleanly whether i agree or not there was a clean path for the normal changing of the charter they could have waited until the 2022 charter commission got met and they could have said they could have pushed their people to win and and done it that way and put a legitimate question in front of the voters and instead they've made it chaotic and when you make it chaotic people reject it because they don't trust the government Generally, they just don't trust the government or I the mean, politicians to be telling them what they think they're telling them. I don't know after, you know, the last 18, 20 months, why anyone would trust anything no. uh, coming from really people who think they own you, you and can control see you. The, um, I saw something today and I just looked at Dan and I'm like, what world do we live in? There was an article. I think it was it was it was probably on Facebook, but they were saying that like half of Americans regardless of which party you're in believe that if you get covid you're gonna there's a 50 percent chance that you're, you're gonna good. end up in the hospital yeah, and i was yeah. like who are these people yeah. you have less than one percent chance of if dying you get COVID, of ending up in the hospital so like how are people thinking you have a 50 percent? that's I not mean, even close it's, so so how, how they're thinking it is they have been subjected to um mass mind control yep. through 24 seven propaganda of one narrative that was designed yep. to terrify you out of your mind, literally. And that is what we're up against. You know, I, someone had posted the other day, um, I think we talked about this, the guy who said, oh, you know, people who, if you were on the Titanic, uh, would you take a life vest? 
And I, and, and, like, and I was like, well, like, was the survival rate on the Titanic 99.8%? <laughs> because well, and, you're not really comparing logical things they're, here. They're not, well, they're just comparing random things. I Those mean, two it, things have nothing to do with each other post, other than there's a chance you could die. So that post got probably like 10,000 likes. You know, I mean, one of the ways I'm actually monitoring how... Um, you know, whether, you know, is shadow banning real? Is it really happening? To what extent is it happening, right? Because, you know, it's it's hard because in some ways you don't want to sound like a nut either, right? right? right. <laughs> and, um, and so one of the things I've been doing, which I don't typically do, is I'm posting comments on, like, uh, President Biden's yeah. uh, post, you know, like yeah. if I see something from uh, Warren or, you know, whatever, yeah. like if something comes up in my feed, I say something one liner, pithy, whatever. Yeah. Those things are all getting magnitudes of 10 to yeah. 20,000 likes, right? right? right now, right. obviously, these people's audiences are huge. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, I say the same thing on Twitter and, you're and no one no. sees it. Right. Or you say it on YouTube and they take your videos yeah. down, which is actually now happening to me, right? So, the censorship is real. And part of the tell is that they're censoring it, yeah. right? So if everything was just normal, right? So if, if society at large had a reasonable sense of what the risk that we were facing with a novel virus was, uh, was normal, then people wouldn't be in this right. like crazy spin, right? But the tell is why are you censoring dissenting voices? Like that is the tell, right? Like every time I go, am I crazy? No. Then I'm like, but if everything was normal, why would Americans suddenly say it is okay for big tech colluding with big pharma, colluding with big government to go, well, we think these people over here are saying things we don't like or we disagree or it's unsciency or whatever it is, right? Wherever in America have we said that's okay? Where We've are... always let the lunatics do their thing and then good ideas crowd out bad ideas. And that's how a functioning democracy is Speaking supposed to work. Speaking of lunacy and when did we ever get allow this, um, what about this? I've only seen it from one bank. What about this new directive from the Biden administration to banks that if you have $600 or more in a bank account, they want to see all your deposit and expenditure um, transactions. Not uh, only that. How, are you, how is everybody, why isn't that front page headline story? Oh, no, it's worse than that. That was actually pushed by Joe Biden on his Facebook account where he said the rich have had a free ride for long enough. We're going to take them down. And then the, the prompt was to this bill that is going to look at people who at spend $600. <laughs> so I don't know about you, Tammy, but That's billionaires a are, you know, there's, a, there's at least, I don't know, at least three zeros, but probably more missing for them to even, you know, blink an eyelid. Well, and never, but 600 bucks is what we spend, right. right? Like that is what a normal middle class person might be like, oh, this is money in, this is money out, right. whatever. So please, they are telling right. you it is a, oh, for the, the rich, rich because they are talking about you and I and Carla and all of the regular plain old But schmoes. what they've done with the with the, the the propaganda, right, is they've persuaded people to that envy yeah. is public policy yeah. as opposed to a vice or, you know, if you're a Catholic, an actual cardinal right, sin, right. right? So we've created this world where it's like everyone is envious and and we're pretending like that's somehow noble. Like we're gonna steal all this stuff from other people. Uh, rich people haven't paid their fair share. I mean the the, the rich in this country right, pay 80 percent almost 80 percent of even, the entire right. tax load and individually if you're paying more that I mean just because you have more money should you have to pay more than half of it to the government like why it's still your earnings did you see the Thomas Sowell there was a yeah. uh, see if I get it right so why is it considered greed for me to keep more of my money but it's not considered greed for you to want to take, take my, my money? money think about that well, it's because it's people my, have I, been... It's not greed for me to go out and work all day and, and earn money. That's not greed. That's my motivation and my desire to have the things I want in my life. For somebody else to want to steal my money in order to give it to other people who don't have the same motivation to 
improve their life that I do or make choices different than the choices I do. That is what greed is. I mean, really what it is, is we are just, we are in an information warfare. We are um, up against forces that I think want to create a, uh, an elite class mm -hmm. and then a very controlled populace at the bottom. And you are, we are in a window of time where we either say no, Yep. This is not how it's going to work. Or we are going to be subjected to population control. They are going to control every single aspect of your lives, starting with where you can travel and what shows you can watch. But it's going to go from there. So, you know, again, you know, we this weekend, uh, October 2nd, there is going to be a big rally up at the State House again. It's a health freedom rally. I encourage people who are uh, done, who are uh, frustrated, done. who um, who have kind of watched what has happened and kind of gone, this is, this is not right. Uh, this is not the future we want to build. Because here's the reality. Whatever we acquiesce to now is the future we're building. So the question you should ask yourself when you wake up in the morning is, what is the future I want? And surely this is not the future we want. We don't want some kind of crazy dystopian, totalitarian, controlled environment. We, America is very fortunate. It's the wealthiest country in the world. The people here are great. You know, there has never been sort of this, this pitting of people Oh, you people mean children aren't the, starving to death in America? I mean, you know, the people you know, say that there's, there's children hunger. Children are starving, starving. Um, no, they're not, not just hungry. They're starving to death, like to death. And I'm like, I don't really think children are starving to death in our country. And if they are, there's some other reason other than the lack of food. I mean, may, maybe I, uh, I I don't think they're starving to death either. My best example of that is I watched a documentary on <laughs> uh, meth heads in Arkansas, and they were all fat. So, <laughs> you know, meth heads are... I think are, I saw <laughs> that one. It's true. So, I don't know, but... Um, but you know we're gonna run out of time. Yes. So October second, up at the state house, noon to three. There's a march. We're starting at the library, and then we're kind of uh, going around. Bring your signs. Bring your voice. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Uh, bring a lot of love. And uh, let's just all say, hey guys, uh -uh, we're watching you, and this is not the future we want. And in the meantime, I'm gonna do the shameless plug multiple times every week now till November. Uh, Victoria Selvin for Mayor .com. Go out there. Um, I challenge everybody watching who thinks that Carla and I have the right ideas. You know what? Go out and drop Victoria 10 or 20 bucks on her website. Um, that's all we got for this week. Check out Carla's book, The Ecstatic Pessimist. You can find out find it on carlagarrick.com. And you can also search for C-SPAN book reviews or something like that and watch her interview. And I believe it's available on Amazon, correct? It is all of those See, things. I kind of remember. Anyways, that's all we got for this week. Enjoy the weekend. And we'll be back next week with more exciting things here in Manchester. Take care. Bye.